welcome everybody. My name is Bogler Kapető, and I'd like to present the progress of my PhD project investigating the role of maternal age as a risk factor in the occurrence of the non-chromosomal congenital abnormalities at the Obstetrics and Gynecology Clinic in the Semmelweis University. My vision is a Hungary, where pregnant women receive a state-of-art pregnant care, which is the key to guarantee the best chance for the new generations. And on this way, my mission is to bring the uh, screening methods for the non-chromosomal birth defects for the highest possible level. Currently, I've got two ongoing projects investigating the role of maternal age, uh, the effect of maternal age uh, on the occurrence of uh, non-chromosomal birth defects. Uh, at first, a global level by a meta-analysis, and uh, in the second uh, project is uh, by a uh, population-based study. So please let me start with the meta-analysis. Uh, Non-chromosomal birth defects are really frequent, uh, with uh, about 3 to 5 percent worldwide prevalence, and they are the leading causes of infant mortality and morbidity. Uh, there is a really clear uh, information in the literature uh, with the uh, maternal age and uh, chromosomal abnormalities. Here it exists an absolutely uh, known and absolutely clear uh, correlation, but we need more information about the non-chromosomal abnormalities. As it's visible on this graph, there is a really sharp increase in frequency with chromosomal abnormalities, but we need more, more information about non-chromosomal abnormalities. And because of this, there is no uniform recommendation for these non-chromosomal abnormalities. Our aim is to identify this group regarding maternal age. Our clinical question is, which maternal age categories pose the highest risk for different birth defects? Our uh, study population is pregnant women regardless uh, pregnancy outcomes, including stillbirths, sleepbirths, and miscarriages. We compare different age groups, and our primary outcome is non-chromosomal birth defects together. While our secondary outcomes are uh, either uh, congenital abnormalities individually and group by the ICD-10 categories. Our hypothesis is very young and advanced maternal age increases the risk of non-chromosomal birth defects. Uh, we carried out a systematic search in October in the three comprehensive databases, and in the end of selection period, we've got uh, more than uh, 100 uh, articles for the mathematical synthesis. Uh, after the selection period, we carried out a risk of bias assessment uh, with, uh, following the QIPS uh, methods, and uh, our result is a low risk of bias overall in the included studies. On the next uh, two slides, I'd like to present my first results. Uh, at first, uh, I'd like to speak about non-chromosomal congenital abnormalities together. It's uh, absolutely relevant to examine together because uh, the screening methods are the same. And uh, we analyzed nine articles together, so we get information about more than 10 million participants. And uh, we compared the advanced and the very young maternal age categories. And we found both of these uh, maternal age categories associated with an increased risk ratio, with an increased uh, risk uh, uh, in this question of non-chromosomal abnormalities. On the next slide, I'd like to prevent, uh, I'd like to present you a congenital heart defect. These are really important uh, birth defects as uh, its uh, severity and as its frequency. We analyzed again nine articles and uh, we compared again the advanced and the very young maternal age categories. We found that advanced maternal age category can be a risk factor for non-chromosomal uh, birth defects, for congenital heart defects, with an uh, increased uh, risk ratio, while a uh, younger maternal age category can, pre can prevent it with a lower risk ratio. Uh, these results are both statistically and clinically significant. Uh, the main strength is uh, uh, or study that it can be the first meta-analysis uh, on this subject and with a high number of cases and articles uh, from worldwide or uh, results can be generalizable. 
the male limitations can be inconsistent categorization of outcomes and different age categories. Very young and advanced maternal age increases the risk of congenital abnormalities, while advanced maternal age increases the risk of congenital heart defects. Uh, with highlighting this uh, new knowledge, we can specify our screening methods, for example, for uh, fetal echocardiography, uh, which hasn't got an indication regarding the maternal age today. And this, please uh, let me continue with my second project. Uh, the topic is the same, and uh, we'd like to investigate this question in the Hungarian population. And uh, we've got a high reason to do it, because in Hungary the prevalence is the same as in worldwide, and uh, we've got about 30% uh, of live births which are falling into the high-risk age period. The structure of our uh, study is absolutely the same as the clinical question on the PICO. Uh, we've got our data, we, we collected our data from the Hungarian case control surveillance of congenital abnormalities, which is a really unique database, as its size, as its comprehensiveness, and the wide range of information. So we've got a really detailed information about more than 30,000 pregnancies, which we'd like to compare uh, with uh, the control group, which uh, we collected from the Hungarian Central Statistical Office. So we got in information regarding maternal age about more than uh, three million pregnancies. And uh, I'd like to present you uh, two examples from our results. Uh, our statistical goal was to identify the best three year period uh, to each congenital abnormality and uh, to compare each maternal years, maternal ages relative risk to this period. And uh, with this method, we found that uh, congenital heart defects are accumulated uh, at the old maternal ages, while neural tube defects are accumulated at the young maternal ages. The main strengths are the huge case number, the unique database and data collection methods. And um, among the collected data, maternal age can be the most accurate uh, information and NOVA statistical approach can be also uh, a really uh, good chance uh, to reflect reality weather. The limitations are the changing screening methods and the data collection ended in 2009. Uh, on, this, uh, on this figure, you can see some examples for congenital abnormalities, which are uh, more frequent at very young or advanced maternal age categories, and uh, there are some uh, some uh, congenital abnormalities which uh, showed uh, the, the better, uh, frec higher frequency in both of these groups, for example, cleft fleet and cleft palate and musculoskeletal system diseases. And uh, there are some uh, cases where we couldn't find correlation with maternal age, for example, respiratory system or genital organ system. Uh, we'd like to uh, modify our local protocols with our new knowledge, and we, we, uh, we hope that we can highlight these uh, risky age periods. And uh, we plan examining the role of maternal age with other risk factors from our database. We are at the phase of article writing following the stroke checklist. And uh, we, we hope that we can submit our both of the project in June. Please let me close my presentation with the Nobel Prize laureate Albert Szentgyörgyi. Research is to see what everybody else has, can see and to see what nobody else has told. Thank you for your attention. After having these results and data, what is the next step? How can you implement it? So, uh, okay, I know that pregnancy is not recommended above the age of uh, 35. But what else? So, so what can we do with our results? Uh, what, yes, what's exactly, the clinical exactly. implication? In, exactly. So the, the problem is, as, as I mentioned in the background uh, slide, that uh, the maternal age as a risk factor is absolutely well-known risk factor at chromosomal abnormalities. And uh, exists a really clear, uh, really clear uh, screening method. But uh, this risk factor, uh, it's not, uh, not uh, 
uh, used uh, at chromo non-chromosomal abnormalities. So we could use an advanced uh, ultrasound screening for this patient, and we can use additional ultrasound methods, for example, fetal echocardiography or fetal neurosonography at the risky periods. In your first uh, um, report, you said that the heart failure is, is less uh, in the younger population, so it's a benefit. But if you just, could you show me the, yes. the Hungarian numbers? It was not the opposite, but it was not adhered. The circulatory system, I don't know, is the same. But if you see that the younger population, it's, 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 not, a, it's not a benefit regarding yes. this. Yes, yes, in Hungary. Is there any explanation? It's, it's, uh, it's a bit different. Uh, I think it can uh, happen probably uh, because of the lower case numbers. Of course, a meta-analysis can be always better to analyze more patients together and probably can uh, reflect realistic more. Congenital heart defects can be diagnosed prenatally and postnatally. In this, this register, uh, what kind of uh, congenital heart diseases were included, so in which uh, time frame were uh, established, immediately after delivery or uh, say some, some type of congenital heart defects can be uh, uh, diagnosed later in uh, yes. years. Our database uh, uh, did it in the next three months and uh, it's a really important mm -hmm. question because we uh, we found some heterogeneity uh, examining or, uh, or meta-analysis and analyze our articles and the difference was sometimes the follow-up mm. period. Uh, in, in this study it was three months. I think I asked the same question last time, so why don't we repeat it? That, I mean, this is very fine and very interesting, just uh, my, my only worry is that, that you might not get significance in uh, certain points like that in the, in the um, uh, nervous system malformations in the older ones. Although you see that, I mean, that's increasing, but, but at the same time, I mean, the confidence interval is that big. Yes. So therefore you, so when, when you draw your conclusion, I mean, first of all, I mean, that would be great to get more data, probably. I mean, as, as you increase the sample, if you can increase the sample number in the, uh, in this, then, then actually the, the strength of your evidence is getting to be stronger. But at the same time, and you have to be very careful concluding this, I mean concluding that there is no effect, although you don't see at this sample size, because I assume, I mean there might be, I just talked to uh, uh, Dr. Harness, you see, I mean that he, she, I hear you, she. Uh, and, and actually, she sees the same thing as me. I mean, that, that uh, we have to be very careful. I mean, concluding that there is no effect at that age, although there, most probably there is. But this is very exciting and very important. Anyway. Thank you very much. Do, you, do you want to add anything to this? That do you have a good hope to increase these numbers? I mean, the sample number? Yes, probably it, it, it would be nice to, to follow this, uh, this uh, data.